Hello, my name is Ken. I was diagnosed with an eye condition called central retinal vein occlusion in 2002. I'm not a doctor and I have no medical training, so remember this video is from a patient's understanding and perspective. Let's take a few minutes to look at the retinal cells and layers. This is a view looking down into the bottom half of the eye. The bridge of the nose would be at the top of the screen on the same side as the optic nerve and the temple would be on the opposite side. In a normal eye, light passes through the cornea, pupil, and lens on its way to the back of the eye. In the middle, hollow part of the eye is a clear jelly-like substance called the vitreous. At the back of the eye, the retina senses any incoming light. A cross-section of the retina is shown here in yellow, but actually the retina covers practically the entire back inside surface of the eye. The structure extending from the back of the eye is the optic nerve. It carries the sensory signals of the retina to the brain. The retina contains three main layers of nerve cells. Near the bottom are the light sensitive cells called the photoreceptor cells. When light falls on these cells, they initiate the nerve signals to the brain. These cells include rod cells, which are very sensitive to low levels of light, and cone cells, which are more useful in brighter light for detecting color and providing sharp central vision. In this illustration, we'll represent all of the cone cells in green, but in real life there are three different types of cone cells, red, blue, and green, each specializing in detecting a particular range of colors. In combination, these different cones provide the necessary input for the perception of a full range of colors. The cell layer in the middle is involved with moving the nerve signals up towards the surface of the retina and getting those signals ready for transmission to the brain. Near the surface of the retina are the ganglion cells. They have a very long appendage called an axon or nerve fiber. These nerve fibers run all the way from the body of the ganglion cell to the brain. They travel along the surface of the retina to the optic disc where with all the other nerve fibers from other areas of the retina, they form the optic nerve which leads to the brain. So when light makes its way into the retina and strikes the rods and cones, these photoreceptors initiate the nerve impulses. These impulses are prepared for transmission to the brain as they move up towards the surface of the retina through the upper layers of the retinal nerve cells. And lastly, nerve signals are transmitted to the brain via the nerve fibers as they coalesce from all areas of the retina into the optic nerve. So far, we've only discussed the neurons of the retina. Neurons are the cells involved in initiating or transmitting nerve impulses. The other type of nerve cell in the retina is the glial cell or neural glial cell. Glial cells are primarily involved in performing support functions for the neurons, making sure that they have everything they need to do their job properly. The predominant type of glial cell present in the retina is the Mueller cell. Mueller cells extend from the surface of the retina all the way down to the midsection of the photoreceptor cells. At the surface of the retina, these cells attach to one another and form a membrane which separates the retina from the vitreous above. At their lower end, they form another membrane where the Mueller cells attach to one another as well as to the midsection of the photoreceptor cells. Unlike the representation here, the true shape of the Mueller cell is highly irregular. Their irregular shape allows the Mueller cells to fill the empty spaces surrounding the retinal nerve cells and the interspersed retinal blood vessels. In addition, the Mueller cells surround and protect the cell-to-cell -cell connections between the nerve cells. This kind of intimate contact with various elements of the retina allows the Mueller cells to maintain a favorable working environment for the nerve cells as well as to provide a physical support structure for the retina. Another type of glial cell present in the retina is the astrocyte. If you were to stretch out an astrocyte, it might resemble a star. In the retina, this type of cell is found in the nerve fiber layer, where it surrounds and protects not only the nerve fibers, but also the retinal capillaries present in this layer. 
Another type of retinal cell that is not a nerve cell is the retinal pigment epithelial cell. These cells form a one cell thick layer called the retinal pigment epithelium which is found in between the blood supply of the choroid and the photoreceptors. The retinal pigment epithelium, abbreviated as the RPE, works to make sure that the lowest layer of the nerve cells, the photoreceptors, has everything it needs to do its job well. The RPE continually refreshes and repairs the photoreceptors, which are damaged over time by incoming light. The RPE also handles the exchange of nutrients and waste with the blood supply of the choroid to accomplish these purposes. To finish up, then, we'll go through the names of each of the elements of the diagram we've been using. Toward the top of the diagram is the central cavity of the eye where the vitreous is located. Separating the retina from the vitreous is the internal limiting membrane. This membrane is formed by the ends of the Mueller cells as they adhere to one another. The nerve fiber layer is next, containing the axons of the ganglion cells. The cell bodies of the ganglion cells are in what's called the ganglion cell layer. The layers of the retinal nerve cells are connected to one another in the plexiform layers. This is the inner plexiform layer inner because it is the plexiform layer closest to the center of the eye. Below the inner plexiform layer is the inner nuclear layer. This layer contains the main part of the cell bodies with the cell nuclei of many types of retinal cells. The bipolar, amacrine, horizontal, and Mueller cells are all found here. Underneath the inner nuclear layer is the outer plexiform layer a layer of connections between two layers of nerve cells. The outer nuclear layer contains the top portion of the photoreceptor cells, including the nuclei of the cells. The external limiting membrane is formed by the attachment of the Mueller cells to one another, as well as to the midsection of the photoreceptor cells. Below this membrane is the light-sensing portion of the photoreceptor cells, that is, the rods and cones. The last layer of the retina, located underneath the photoreceptors, is the retinal pigment epithelium. Underneath the retina is Brooks membrane, and finally the choroid. The retinal layers from the photoreceptors upward are referred to as the sensory retina, or the neural retina, and any space below the sensory retina but above the retinal pigment epithelium is said to be a subretinal space. In this video, colors have been used to differentiate the various cell types, but in reality almost all of these cells are transparent. 